Well, I just wanted to just say again what an honor it is to have you joining us this morning live. You know, it's not something that we take for granted, and we just consider it such an honor that that we are a, a place that you are looking to, to hear the Lord speak, to be encouraged, um, and to really just be a part of this community. And so I just want to say thank you for tuning in today. And we're excited because we're going to continue into a series that we started a couple weeks ago called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I really thought this was going to go one direction, and we've really started in a different place. But I'm so thankful for what the Lord's been putting on our hearts yeah. to really to bring to the church and to bring it this time. Yeah, and not just to the church, but also speaking to us. Absolutely. You know, these words, are, as we prepare messages, as you navigate through this, you know, it's not just something we're like, hey, we hope this works for you. Let us know. Um, but I, I'm finding that I'm even being challenged um, with either it's affirming words that I've had, you know, so when you were saying can't stop, won't stop, you know, fighting for his presence, you know, um, how that is relevant even in, in my own life for things that are vying for my attention that want to come in place of his presence and um, want to be the counterfeit to his presence, counterfeit solutions and stuff. And so um, I just have been, so, I personally been blessed by your message um, or the messages and, you know, what the Lord is stirring in us and, um, and not even getting rid of the notes, but going back, you know, so often I, I'm guilty of writing notes and like, oh, that's good. And then, you know, something that I've been really navigating is when the Lord speaks, you know, there was the, the children of Israel long to hear their God speak. And so many times we hear him speak and then we, at least for myself, you know, I'll close it and put it away and I just leave it and I forget about it. But man, that I would cherish the word of God that is the Holy Spirit is prompting stuff in you that you wouldn't just leave it on a Sunday, that you would go back to it. Um, if there is something that he has spoken, you know, or you taking a note on your phone, whatever, go back to it. If there's a verse that's there's a scripture that's, you know, stood out to you, meditate on it. This is to be a word that that propels us forward. And so I know that I've been really blessed and challenged in not just letting the word be the word and let it go till Sunday, um, but allowing that to marinate in my own heart and produce something or pull stuff out, yeah. you know, um, and and take care of things that way. Yeah. And so, you know, we're, we've been talking about can't stop, won't stop. And, and really that, you know, now is not the time to to back down or to back away. Mm -hmm. But the, the Lord really is calling us to actually press in. Yeah. Because there's something that he wants to do. And, and I really hope it's our prayer as a church and as a people of God that we would not look back at this time and be like, oh, we missed an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We missed a moment. We missed that, that, that time, that specific time that God had preordained something to take place. And I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that everything that he has for us comes to pass. Yeah. Amen. And so we're talking about can't stop, won't stop. But last week we talked about healing to move. Mm -hmm receiving healing in order to move forward. Yeah. You know, a lot of believers are really trying to operate and fulfill their calling and their assignments wounded mm -hmm. and, and hurting and broken. And when we're hurting, wounded or broken, we don't function correctly. Mm -hmm. And so we really talked about how our starting point is coming into his presence, right? We talked about won't stop fighting for his presence, but we also talked about receiving healing, yeah. the healing that has been made available to us by Jesus, right? To receive that healing and that freedom in order to function and move forward yeah. the way he always intended for us to move. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about healing to move, that we can't just start doing things and expect supernatural results, right? They can even be good things. We can say, Lord, this was for you. But if we don't come from a place of healing and restoration that Jesus made available to us, it doesn't work the way he intended. You know, this morning as I was reading um, and going over the notes, but I was reading Jeremiah 33, and we're going to go there, but just something that I, it affirmed what you were speaking to last week in Jer Jeremiah 33, 6, it says, Behold, so this is um, the Lord speaking through uh, Jeremiah, behold, I will bring to it, bring it to health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal their abundance of prosperity and security. I'll restore the fortunes of Judah and the for, the fortunes of Israel and and rebuild them as they were at first. I will cleanse them from all guilt of their sin against me. I will forgive them of all their guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. And this city shall be a name of joy and praise and glory before all nations of the earth who shall hear all the good that I do for them. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and the prosperity I provided. I provide for it. And I just was reminded as I was getting ready for this morning, but I was reading that of 
that's his heart is that there would be um, healing to us, that the sins will be forgiven and, and addressed. And that's his promise. And what we, we, that we have in him is that he does not looking at us like shameful. Why haven't you figured this out? Or, you know, pointing fingers. No, he's saying, no, let me bring healing to that and restore. And then you will be known. So again, the prophet Jeremiah is talking to the children of Israel or God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah to the children of Israel. But the promise that can be even found, he says, you will be known for your joy. Man, that's a promise of God for all of us is that we wouldn't just be Christians who um, walk and that are, you know, walking injured, but that he would bring restorations to be places of joy. That's good. And so we talked about how Jesus really is. He's our true source of healing and that there's a lot of counterf counterfeits out there. There's a lot of other options out there. But Jesus is calling us. He's calling his church back to him. And so that we would be that people that fix our eyes on Jesus, that look to him as our true source of healing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. for your healing. Yeah. And so we're going to continue in this series called Can't Stop, Won't Stop. And we're going to we're going to talk about hearing his voice. Can't stop, won't stop hearing his voice. How many of you know there's a lot of voices out there? Yeah right? It, it seems like more than ever, there are more voices out there than ever before. Voices that want your attention, voices that want your investment, that want your resources, that want your energy. There is voices surrounding us like never before. And the noise is loud, right? And so there's all this outward there are voices that are causing confusion, that are causing distractions, that are causing um, alternate agendas contrary to what the Lord is really wanting to accomplish. And I believe that this, the, that what the Lord is wanting to speak to us today he's, is he's calling out and he's saying, will you be a people who hear my voice, yeah. a people who is led by me? Because here's the, here's the deal. We don't just want to hear what everybody else is saying. Yeah. We need to be able to hear what God is speaking to us, what God is speaking to you. And, and how many of you know, he wants to speak to you yeah. personally. Amen? Amen. He wants to speak to you personally. He just, he doesn't want to just speak to you through other people. That's important, right? God, that's one of the way God speaks is he speaks to us through other people, yeah. but we should all be hearing God for ourselves. Yeah. And in this time and in this season, it is so important. And we're finding how important this is right now, right where we're at, yeah. that we need to be hearing the voice of the Lord like never before. And so now more than ever, we need to hear what God is speaking to you personally. You know, I was talking to Zach this morning, who is a, he, he works with wood and he's a carpenter and he does all these things. And I wanted to get my facts straight because I've heard this example before, but I think it, I think I could have, I could have told you that kept the facts straight because this is how I do things. Yeah. So yeah. I could have told you how yeah. uh, we've done this. Yes, okay. I have done this. But how many of you know, if you are cutting wood, right? And or you're, anything like you're, material. yeah, you're cutting wood to a length based on something that you want. Right. And so you're cutting a piece of wood and, and, and you want it a certain length. And so you measure it and you, you cut it and you got the length that you want. And let's say you use that, that length to, to mark the next piece. Right. And then you set it aside and you cut that length. And then you go to the next piece of wood and you use the wood that you just cut to, to measure the length and you, you cut again that slowly but surely, because we're not you basing our measurement off the original, but we're using the measurement of the copy mm -hmm. of the copy of the copy. How many of you know that after a, several cuts, you have two boards, two pieces of wood that are completely different lengths? Yeah. Because every time you cut, the, the size of the blade, it, blade is shaving down mm -hmm. that, that original from that original length. And in the same way, the, the, so the measure slowly gets off and to the point where they're no longer usable, right? You might have wanted to build a table, but now you got a table with legs that aren't even the same size and they're not even usable. Well, how many of you know that in the same way, we can't live our lives only based on what other people are saying. Yeah. We can't live our lives only based on other people's measurements. Yeah. We have to be hearing from the source. We have to have that, that measurement because if we're only hearing what people are saying, might, they might be hearing it from what other people are saying. They're hearing it from other people. They're hearing it from other people. And now all of a sudden, it's not even the same measure. It's yeah. not even the same word. It's not even almost usable yeah. to a degree. And so we can't move forward based on other people's measurements. We need to be able to hear God for ourselves. Yeah. 
you know, in a time where we're in a time of information and technology, you know, I, I know that this is true in the little research that I've done um, is, you know, even when we go online or we're on plat social media platforms or even Google, like all of those things that are what they do. My gosh, my mind just continues to get blown with how much they tailor what you're looking for, what your interests are to tailor what shows up on your screen to tailor what shows up on your algorithm of your social media. So if you have a lot of people who are echoing the same thing or similarly, man, I just, I, I was talking to my kids. I was talking to how, you know, social media, all these things, the culture that plays into how we follow the Lord and all of that. That was kind of the conversation that that was going, but how much of that information is actually tailored to what we want to hear and what we want to find and what we want. So in a time where information and technology is way faster and way more than ever is when we need to be sitting and looking up in our, in our, in our Bibles, you know, what does the word of God actually say? You know, there's, there's phrases that you hear people say that, um, you know, like God works in mysterious ways. That's a very common one. Where, where do we get that? You know, and, and people will sometimes even think, oh, that that's in the Bible. No, 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 that's not in the Bible. You know, maybe the concept of it or maybe the thought patterns of how we didn't understand how he was working. But there's things that just over time have become almost like us to live by. And yet it's it's uh, there's portions of the truth. And yet we've we've gotten away from the actual truth of what God's word says. Yeah. You, you really can find people out there to say what you want to hear. Mm. You can find people to affirm anything that you want to know, anything that you want to believe, whether it's true or not. Yeah. And the world, the enemy is out there to get to get voices in our ears that really aren't the Lord. Yeah. And we may think it is. Yeah. And so that is the key why we need to go back to that original measure, yeah. the measure of God's word, that original word. What is he speaking to me? I'm hearing things and it's it's bearing witness. Yeah. Right. I'm encouraged by what I heard today. I'm or or I believe that to be true. But what is God saying to you? Yeah. Because he wants to speak to you personally. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so Jesus said in Mark 4, 23, he says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. Notice Jesus wasn't saying if anyone has ears, yeah. you know, let them hear. Everyone that he was talking to most likely had ears, right? Unless there was some tragic accident, right? But m most likely everybody that he was talking to had ears. But what Jesus was pointing out is that not everyone has ears to hear. To hear. Yeah. And may we be a people that have the ears to hear what he is saying. You know, sometimes I, well, I enjoy football and I really like watching football games and and, you know, football season is, is back up it and is. it's running. And and I know there's a lot of controversy around that, too. Right. But when I'm watching football. Right. And somebody's talking to me. I'm probably not really hearing what they're saying. Yeah, I always want to know the details of the football players. Why are the coaches angry about it? I want to know all the tea. Give me the tea <laughs> on the game. Why Why are they angry? Why are they cussing on TV? Like, what <laughs> happened? And Jay is watching the game in it. So yes. I, I'm always talking to him when you yes. say some, some people. Well, there is a clear <laughs> difference between the way I watch TV and I'm watching a football game in the way that she is watching a football game. And so when I'm watching, you know, I'm actually watching and listening to what to what is being said. I'm like watching and making food and taking care of kids and, and talking to and me, talking, right. And yeah. talking to me. And so she's talking and talking and talking. And I'm like, listen, honey, I've I've got two ears, but they're only connected to one brain and I can only listen to one thing at a time. And right now, that's not you. Right. And <laughs> and immediately we 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 i look at her and she looks at me and i then turn off the tv and i listen to her right like is that true no no okay all right it's in the middle of a game but you'll tell me like just wait hold on i'm trying to find out or right you do you acknowledge me but then you try to go back but we like to think you know we like to think that we can have our attention on multiple things that we can be doing one thing and paying attention to another but jesus is pointing out that not everyone has ears to hear what he is saying Right. We're tuned into other sources. Yeah. We're tuned into other pleasures, other interests, other people, other pastors. We're, we're tuned into all these other things. And Jesus is saying, listen, if you have ears to hear, notice you don't have to be hyper spiritual. You don't have to be in the Christian elite. Right. If they're 
if there was such a thing. You don't have to be any of those things. You just need to have ears yeah, just to hear. Yeah. Jesus is talking about something. He's, he's tapping into something. He's saying there's something that is available to you. I am speaking. Do you have ears to hear? And so I want to talk about some things that some adjustments that and, and some things that we need to be aware of in order to hear his voice more clearly in our lives. How many of you would say, I want to hear Jesus more yeah. clearly? I want to hear the Lord more clearly in my yeah. life. Amen? Amen. And so in order for us to have ears, what he is saying, number one, we must be confident knowing that God wants to speak to you. Yes. You have yes. to know that, you know, you know, you might think like, well, I'm not good enough mm. or or I haven't I don't deserve to be yeah. able or I'm not I don't deserve to be able to hear what the Lord is saying. We have to be confident yeah. knowing that God wants to speak to you. This is so important. Yeah. So many. Sorry. So many times the enemy plays that. Like I was saying last week, plays a tape in our head of all the reasons we're disqualified to hear him speak. And and the Lord is saying, no, I, I desire and long to speak to you like as you are where you are in that moment you know it says draw near to me and and what he'll draw near to us there's that's all all the prerequisite for hearing the lord really is believing man no he loves me and he wants to speak to me right. that's that's the starting ground that i can come and i'm not interrupting him as i'm interrupting you oftentimes no he yep he it longs for those moments it's not an interruption he desires to speak to you yeah and so we got to know that mm -hmm. we've got to know that number one that god wants to speak to you he loves you and if you're listening to this today you need yeah. to know that you know that you know that he he loves you he does. He wants to be with you and he wants to speak to you yes. because if we can't hear him, you don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. If mm -hmm. we can't hear him, we don't know his direction. We don't know how he's leading us. If we can't hear him, then we don't know what to do yeah. because we don't know how to follow. And so we have to learn how to hear his yeah. voice. Listen to what Jesus said in John 10, 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice yeah. and I know them and they follow me. You know, I, I've heard people say before, you know, I'm afraid of people that say that they can hear God speak. And I would immediately say, well, I'm afraid of people that say that they don't hear God speak, yeah. right? Because Jesus is saying, my sheep hear my voice. You know, it's something that we're to be tapping into. It's yeah. something that we're to be able to do. Now, I, I, I do want to be clear. I've never personally heard the audible voice of God, mm. but I have heard God speak to me in many different ways. Yeah. I've heard him speak through his word. I've heard him speak as I'm just sitting in his presence. Right. Or those times of prayer where I'm praying and asking and calling out to the Lord. And and and, and there's that, that I hear that inward voice that that speaking to me. I've, I've heard him speak through the promptings of the Holy Spirit, right? There's different ways that God speaks, but he is speaking, yeah, right? Absolutely. And so we need to know that there is a real God, and he really does speak, absolutely. and he wants to speak to you. Yes. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. Are you his? Are yeah. you following him? Yeah. And, and he's saying, hear my voice, hear my voice. But you see, if we can't hear him speak, then we can't follow him yeah. correctly. We're going to be that lost sheep, right? We're going to be out in the wilderness. We're going to be away from everything, all the green pastures that he's leading us into. We want to be able to hear him today. Amen. Amen. And so, number one, we have to know that God wants to speak to us. But number two, we must turn off mm. the noise. Everybody say, turn off the noise. Turn off the noise. Turn off the noise. More than ever. More than ever. Turn off the noise. Before you go to YouTube. And you listen to your favorite preacher, your favorite teacher. Have you been hearing the Lord for yourself? Mm. Have you spent time in the word? Have you spent time in prayer? See, we've got to have that original measure. Listen, what they can be saying is true, but because we haven't received from the Lord, all of a sudden we're hearing through this filter that is causing us to interpret even the words incorrectly. Yeah. You see, we have to turn off the noise. Right. Were you going to say something? Well, I was just going to say, you know, a noise for us is also really different. You know, um, there's toys that we just got used to the noise when our kids were little. Um, I, uh, yeah, we had. Even now. We had my, my brothers or uncles or they would buy toys that they were like, this is really going to bother 
Jack. Yeah. Like this is gonna get in under his skin. It's annoying. They would try to find the most annoying toys yeah. that work. they could. It didn't work. I learned I had learned to tune, tune it, it out. out. I mean, you could they could be banging, banging, banging. Or mm. sing along. I would sing along with yep. it. And so I would even make a remix. Like yeah. I would start to like make my own version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Yeah. Right. Like and I would just like, you know, I would have a dance and but, I would have a crew and Yeah. So sometimes my point being is that you can adapt to the noise. And you can adapt to the noise being present in your life and not even recognize that it is it's it, that it's noisy and that it's causing an interruption of, of being able to hear the Lord. And so I think, you know, we talk about turn off the noise. You know, one of the best ways I always think, you know, so we, we're just saying God wants to speak to you. He loves you. But how do you know he's speaking? You know, the first place that we always our starting point needs to be is the word of God, because when people come and they're char- and they're challenging him speaking to you or they're challenging what you're hearing or you're challenging any of that. We need to learn the, the rhythm of his voice, the rhythm of who he is, the things that echo through his word. And this is really our starting point is that I can be reminded even just as I was reading in Jeremiah. Oh, no, Lord, your word says that you will blot out my sins and my transgressions and that I am forgiven. Right. That's what I know he can do. That's who I know he says who he is. I, and so when then when the enemy or even people come to try to disqualify you, what, what am I going ba- based on? Am I going based on my behavior or am I going based on the on who he is? No, he yeah. says that I am being perfected until he comes back. Man, no, it says that I can repent and humble myself That's before right. the Lord and he will enter me into times of refreshing. Right. Do you see how that works? Yeah. And so I just think when we talk about turning off the noise um, we and, and God speaking to us, it's imperative. I keep going back. We have to get in his word because that's how we know who he is that's how we wrestle through those places that people have questions is we know who god is and so we got to pay attention that we're not getting so used to the noise that we also tune everything out but that we actually get the right stuff in so that we can clear out those filters in our mind that's good yeah and so we we find there there's this there's this huge problem today in the church there's this huge problem amongst believers people that love the lord mm-hmm. that really do want to hear him speak but there's this problem called spiritual deafness there's where there's so much noise from the outside there's information overload there is so much distraction through what we watch on tv or that our favorite shows or social media is it is a huge noise uh music the type of music we listen to right the, that's the counsel of the wicked right like the, there are all these things that add to this distortion where all of a sudden mm-hmm. we can't we can't tune in to the voice of the lord properly and so with all of that static we have a hard time discerning the still small voice mm-hmm. Of the Lord. You know, sometimes when I'm listening to the radio, and yes, I do listen to the radio still because my car player is that old, right? But I but I still I'll listen, I'll be listening to the radio, but you pull up at an intersection and all of a sudden there's all this static and interference, right? And and it gets to the point where I can't even hear what the original thing that I was listening to. And in the same way, that's how mm-hmm. our walks with the Lord sometimes are, where where we 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 approach things in our lives, and all of a sudden there's this influx of static, this yeah. influx of noise to the point where we can't even hear what we what we were wanting to listen to, that still small voice of the Lord. And so some of us have a lot of interference in our lives. We've allowed we've allowed a lot of other things, pleasures, comforts, things that we thought would bring refreshing, but really all it has caused is static and noise Mm. and there is more i we just we were just watching something that there is more emotional unhealth today because of all the noise because of all the distraction because of all the outside influences that we think are bringing satisfaction that we think is giving us what we need but really it's just causing static and noise you know as as believers as christians as disciples of christ as a follow of christ wherever you however you want to categorize it it's important that we do assessments of our own heart and our life because as a believer our call is to partner with the lord and to bring people into healing into wholeness now that's not our job to bring them necessarily to bring you know the manifestation of that healing but he calls us to be his vessels and so it's imperative for us to be quicker to respond um, you know, as first responders, they have a, a responsibility that they're the first on the scene to assess a situation. And if they're, man, you know, working with or I, I think of, you know, any sort of first responder, 
if they're trying to make sure everything's adjusted as they're going to scene, it's already too late, right? You don't need to be messing with your belt or messing with these pieces of equipment. And so as believers, it's important for us to begin to make sure our equipment is taken care of, that our mind is taken care of, that those places that the enemy wants to snag is taken care of because we're not, um, as, as Christians, we're not, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like he is our shield, but, but the, the attack of the enemy still can come. He still wants to come and still kill and destroy from all of us. So it's important as believers, you know, even as I walking through this, Lord, where's that noise? Where's that static? That I, Cause I tolerate static too. What are those hearing inhibitors? Those yes. things that are causing me to not hear that are then gonna, correctly. Yep. That are then going to get in the way as we try to go and be ministers of Christ and, and be examples for him. And so what, wherever you find yourself, it's not a place of guilt or shame it's the reality that we are to be giving attention to those things in our heart yeah here's what jesus said about spiritual deafness in matthew 13 15 jesus says for the hearts of this people notice the hearts of this people have grown dull mm. it, it doesn't even happen immediately but that there is things that we allow there's things that we tolerate there's things that we accept or look for there's things in our lives that causes our hearts to grow dull, right? It happens over time. It can happen through other voices, other priorities, other desires. But notice Jesus says the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Let, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand, stand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you can make the adjustments, if you can hear and do what I say to do, then it brings healing to your life. And, and that is so key. It, this is talking about the importance of hearing God speak, because when we can hear, we can make the adjustments. Yeah. We can take care of the things that need to be taken care of. We can address the things in our lives that need to be addressed yeah. and make the adjustments so that we can walk obediently before the Lord and he brings healing to our life. Amen. Yeah. We need healing in our lives. We need the healing of Jesus, but there is things that we have run into. Each one of us have these things, things that we have run into, um, uh, excuse us, things that we have run into, uh, physical things, limitations, barriers, obstacles, but there's spiritual things that happen in our lives, things that resistances, warfare, things that we have been coming up against and we're like, why isn't anything that I'm doing working? Why doesn't, why isn't this happening? I thought God spoke to me and, and I've been trying to do things obediently, but it's not coming through. And oftentimes it's because we're not hearing anymore. We haven't heard. We don't know how to follow. We don't know the adjustments to make. We don't know the paths and the courses to take. And Jesus is saying, if you can tune in, remove the distractions and hear my voice, then I will bring healing to your life. Somebody needs that. Yeah. Somebody needs to hear that today. Somebody is, has been looking for healing. And Jesus is saying, come back to the original measure. Mm. Don't just lo listen to everybody else. I'm speaking to them too. But listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. I have a word for you. You know, oftentimes when we pray, we'll, pl we'll pray things along the lines of, God, help me do this. Or, or God, just, just, just make this happen. Or, or, or just, Lord, that, that you would just come through. But how many of you know almost always the answers to prayer, the things that we're looking for, there's changes and adjustments that he wants to make in our lives. Things that will unlock things. Yeah. Things that will cause us to take us from a place of bondage and into a place of freedom. And God is saying, listen, you have to you have to do something. There's adjustments you have to make so that I can bring blessing to your life. But God knows what those adjustments are that we need to make in order to make room mm -hmm. for that to happen. Amen? Amen. And so when we become spiritually deaf, we can't make the proper adjustments. Yeah. We can't make those decisions, right? We think we know what's best. We'll try to make some adjustments, but unless we're hearing from the source, unless we're hearing from the original measure, we really just add weights to our lives. Mm. And we burden ourselves with the expectations of others or the things that worked for others. And we try to apply those things to our life and we don't have success. Mm. But Jesus is saying, my sheep hear my voice. Mm. And if they can hear, oh, if they can hear, they will turn and make the adjustments and I will bring healing to their life. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just tell you something here. We cannot be led by our circumstances. Wow. 
We cannot be led by circumstances because here's the thing. Yeah. Even our circumstances will try to speak to you. Our circumstances, what we face, what we see, what we feel, all of those things are a voice. Yeah. All of those things will begin to preach to you. They will talk to you. See, this wasn't God. See, this won't happen for you. See, this must not be working. You, you, you know, you tried the church. You tried God. You tried to follow. But how many of you know our circumstances will preach to you if you allow it? Yeah. But we don't want to be hearing what our circumstances are saying. Yeah. We need to trust the Lord more than our circumstance. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I am so guilty of that. I feel like we so are all <laughs> guilty of this. I will just say that so many times I um, this I allow my circumstances and what we don't what we forget, what I forget. This is I, I, me admitting is that the word of God says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities. So that what that means to me is I'm not wrestling against what I can see here but what I see here is trying to distract me from what the word of God is saying or that he's at work or that he's doing something and so many times I am guilty of um, allowing circumstances to to preach and be what I go by and yet the Lord is saying that we're called to live by faith mm -hmm. and that means faith is believing in something we cannot see yeah. and circumstances it are the is the opposite almost of faith that that circumstances are sh are showing us something that may not actually come up in alignment with the word of god and so the enemy is so often there telling us and and can want to help me break down the situation if you know what i mean and really he's just getting me like t you know off in my own world with going on these circumstances and yet god is saying no look to me to the author and finisher of your faith look to me look to keep your eyes on me you know in proverbs it talks about keeping our eyes on him not to look to the left or to the right because it's health to our bones what is that saying where we look matters where we give our attention matters and so often i allow the circumstances and then the enemy partners with that to begin to tell me Yep, Susie, see, you're done. Yeah, see, you, you were wrong about this. Yeah, Susie, you know, what, what were you thinking? And he plays it over. And the Lord is saying, no, look to me. I am the author and finisher of your faith. I'm the author and finisher of you and your story. Keep pressing in. Keep your attention to me. Right. Keep your eyes on me. Put, put aside all distractions. Stop looking at circumstances. Because if we, we read in scripture that as we get closer to the latter days, as he comes, the circumstances around us are going to begin to look very dire. Why should we expect anything less, right? I think so often, even where we find ourselves is all of these circumstances around us are actually telling a story. Mm -hmm. And what story are we going to allow? What are we going to partner with? Or are we going to partner with despite the circumstances, despite the story, despite what's going on around us? God's word says that the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. What is that saying? God is saying people are ready to receive my word. Well, don't you see everything that's happening around us? No, but God's word says that the, the harvest is plentiful. It's been plentiful since he, he went back up to heaven with his heavenly father. That has not changed. The mandate of, of believers has not changed. What has changed is my ability to either to tap into what he is saying or to do the easy thing, which is to let circumstances be the dictator of how I move and function. Yeah, yeah we cannot be led by our circumstances. Mm -hmm. Some of us have allowed our circumstances to be a stronger voice than the voice of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, don't be led by your circumstance. Be led by my spirit. Be led by my spirit. Hear my voice. Yes. I, I, I read a quote. It has a lot to do with what you say from Lisa Turker. She said, whatever we chase, like it or not, gains our full attention. Mm. Oh, Lord, may you be our greatest pursuit today wow. and every day. Whatever we chase gains our full attention like it or not and so may he may we give our attention to him yeah. especially in this time yeah. let's never stop let's not quit let's not give up let's not surrender let's not surrender to our circumstances anymore let's not surrender to those other voices that we've given place to before the lord yeah. the lord is saying be led by me be led by my voice amen yeah and i think that that's for us you know one of our anchors has been the people that you surround yourself with 
man, I can say that there have been people in our life who have echoed what they know that the Lord has spoken to us. And when we begin to come with them with our circumstances, th they will stop us or they'll, they'll let me talk a little bit and then they'll go, okay, are you through? And then they'll say, so what are you going to do? What has the Lord said? You know, his word is imperative and who we surround ourselves with is imperative. Now, I, I always say this. I have people around me who are not like me. Majority of my friends are the salt of the, and salt of the earth. They are sweet and gentle and kind and tenderhearted and, and their expression of who Jesus is very different than I am. However, that's what I need. I need them to, to see something that I don't see and to call out beyond the circumstances, to call beyond my feelings of what I'm feeling and to begin to call out the promises of God that I've poured out, that I've laid out, my heart that I've shared with them, the things that God has, has said. I'd say that that's been imperative to this whole don't stop, won't stop, are the people, and this isn't a point, this is a side note, it's the people you surround yourself with. What are the things that they're about? What are the things that they're giving their attention to? What are the pursuits of their heart you know I love my sisters because they look at me and they love me but they speak the truth to me they speak the truth and and whatever that is whether it's to encourage me whether it's to correct me my sisters but they call me back to God they both will say but what is God saying or you know that's an attack from the enemy one of my sisters said that it was Thanksgiving time and she's like you guys know that that was the enemy right and wow what 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 great blessing it is to surround ourselves with people who are different expressions of who God is, but will call us beyond the circumstances and re have us refocus and say, well, what did God say? You know, I've, I heard a story once of a guy who had gotten a new hearing aid and, and he began to brag to his neighbor. He said, this hearing aid is the top of the line. It is so good. You can hear a pin drop, right? And so the guy said, oh, that's awesome. He goes, hey, hey, what kind is it? And the man who got the hearing aid said, oh, it's about 2.30, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes we think we're hearing clearly. We think we're hearing, but we're really not hearing. Mm. Amen. Yeah. And I just want to take a moment. I just want to declare right now yes. that spiritual deafness Amen. is falling off of people yes. right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. That if you're hearing these words, yeah. I declare that your spiritual ears are popping open yeah. right yeah. now in Jesus' name. Yeah. He wants to speak to you. Amen. He wants you to hear his voice. Yeah. Not just what other people are saying. Even though we can be blessed by that. He, yeah. we, right? The, 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 the believers in Acts, they, they stayed, they remained in the teachings of the apostles. So there, there, that needs to be happening. We need to be hearing the preaching, yeah. the teaching, all of those things. But first, what's the original measure? Yeah. What is the original yeah. measure that God yeah. is speaking to you? Yeah. Amen. 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 Number three, and we're going to close with this. In order for us to have ears, what, what he is saying, number three, we can learn from Jesus's example. Yeah. Everybody say, yeah, no duh. <laughs> I was like, of course, I, I right? No, no, seriously. But no, from, from our reading, from our reading, I was just really touched by this, this chapter, by what Jesus really, what hearing God, hearing from the father directly, how that prepared Jesus yeah. for what was ahead. And I want, I want to take time and just, I'm going to start us off in, in John chapter seven, verse 53. Um, but notice Jesus's example here, and we're not going to go through all of it, but this is the chapter where, you know, they bring in the woman caught, caught in adultery and to test Jesus, right? And they challenge who he is. They, they challenge his identity. They challenge Jesus's assignment. And how many of you have ever felt those things, right? I found myself really relating in that moment that I am feeling challenged on every front, every front. And, and how does the voice of the Lord prepare us for that? Mm. Right. And so we see in John chapter seven, verse 53, it says, it says this, and everyone went to his own house. All right. So this was after Jesus was ministering, after Jesus was teaching, it says everybody went to their own house. But I want you to notice chapter eight, verse one, it says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Mm. Now, what we know about the Mount of Olives is that was like Jesus's go to quiet place. That was, that was where he would go to be with the Lord. That was where he was the night before he gave his life in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was praying and seeking the father. And he's, he was crying out to the Lord, you know, if, 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 if you can take this cup from me, right. And, but not my will, but yours. Right. And this is, this is a place where Jesus would go to meet with Jesus. I would challenge you. Where's the place you go to meet with Jesus? Where's the place you go to hear the voice of the father, yeah. to hear him speak to you. But notice everyone went to their own house. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. This was a place where Jesus would go. Yeah. 
This was his usual place to go and pray, to be with the Father. But I want us to learn from Jesus' example, and I'm not going to go through the whole chapter. We're not going to do that. But I would encourage you to take some time and, and just read through this and notice how hearing the voice of the Father prepared Jesus for, for, the, t- for the situations at hand. But in Jesus' uh, example in John chapter 8, it shows us that because he would go spend time praying to, and hearing the Father, we see that, number one, Jesus taught the people the things he had heard from the Father. We're going to put these up on screen real quick because I know some of us are not just audio but visual, all right, so you can read along. But we see in verse 2, 38, and 47, Jesus taught the people the things that he had heard from the Father. Jesus didn't just come with some good words or some wise sayings. He heard from the Father and spoke into the lives of, the, of other people. And I would encourage you that the, 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 the gift that you can be to other people when you hear the voice of the Father that God wants to speak to you, not just things for your own life. He wants to speak things that you are going to share and impart in the lives of others that's going to set them free, yeah. that's going to cause them to walk in, in promise and in salvation and wholeness and healing. But we also see from Jesus' example in verse 3 through 11 that the accusers came to test Jesus, but Jesus knew how to respond. Why? Because he had heard from the Father. He had heard from the Father. The Father had prepared him. And I would, I would encourage you today that Jesus wants to prepare you. He wants to prepare your heart so that you know how to respond Amen. in those tests, in those times, in those situations where, you, you know, most people don't know the answer. He wants to give you the answer. Amen. Amen. And then we see in 13 to 20, it says, uh, it talks about how the accusers challenged Jesus's identity. I, I, I know more than ever, people's identity is being challenged today unlike ever before. Mm. And it's because we aren't hearing clearly who, G- who, who the Father has called us to be. The Father has already given us our identity. The accusers challenged Jesus' identity, but Jesus had already been I- defined by the words of the Father. Yeah. He was unwavering in who he was. And then we see in 22 to 47, it, the accusers challenged Jesus' purpose and assignment, but Jesus has se- had already s- heard and seen the will of the Father. You know, we talk about our ears being open. We talk about being able to hear the voice of the Father, but how many of you know he wants us to see it? Yeah, he wants us to good. see what he is doing. And when we see it, not just, not just hear it, but when we see it in our hearts, all of a sudden there's this new level of boldness yeah. and confidence. And so there is things that God is wanting to cause you to see as he speaks. He wants yeah. you to see it in your heart. He wants you to believe it. So that when those those uh, when people challenge, when people say that's not going to work for you or that's is that really what God said? You know that, you know, that, you know, in my heart, I know God has spoken because I see it. I see it. Amen. And then we see in verse 48 to 59, the accusers try to dishonor Jesus. But Jesus already received his honor Mm -hmm. from the father. You know, some of us are trying to gain the honor from the wrong places. We're trying to impress the wrong people. We, we have more fear of people than we have fear of the Lord. Wow. And the Lord is saying, my true honor, the honor that you are looking for, it comes from me. It comes from me. Mm-hmm. And so we can learn from Jesus' example. And I would encourage you just this today, but this week, to, to read John chapter 8. This was from our Solid Life uh, journal reading because we like to read our Bibles yeah. every day, every day. And maybe the, you're following the plan. Maybe you're not following the plan. It's, it's something that I always go, start from. Uh, because I like to go through the whole word every year. But um, but that was our reading last week. And it just really spoke to me about Jesus' example, about how him going and being with the Father, hearing the Father really prepared him in all those aspects. And that God wants to do the same thing in our hearts. Yeah. And so we're going to we're gonna close. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? Are we, are we good? Okay. Right? I, I'm starting to talk a lot. All right. Okay. But we're going to go, we're going to go into our discussion questions. And I want to read those quickly to you. And they are, number one, read John 8. If you're doing church at home or with, if you're with other people, just take a second and read through that. Read John chapter 8 and, and just observe how did Jesus' spending time hearing the Father prepare him for his encounter with the Pharisees or the accusers? Yeah. That's what I kept referring to them as because these were accusers that were coming into Jesus' life and, and we all got the haters. 
There, everybody's yeah. if, you, if you're if you are trying to honor and serve the Lord, you have haters, people that are going to accuse you, come against you, uh, speak things that are contrary to the word of God. Yeah. And Jesus knew how to handle it because he had heard from the father. Mm. So that, that's number one. Number two, what adjustments do you feel you can make to tune in better and hear God speak to you? What adjustments in your life can you make to tune in better, to increase your hearing? Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. We should be hearing, all right? We should be getting that original measure. And then lastly, it, uh, pray. Whether you're by yourself or if you're with other people, pray and ask God to open your spiritual ears today. Thank him that he wants to speak to you. Thank him that his voice brings healing to your life. Amen. Amen. I need healing in my life. I need it more than ever. I need it daily. I was talking to Susie this week and I was like, I cannot stop praying. Like more than studying, more than my task. I find even in my task, all I can do is pray because there is such a weight right now, uh, a need for people to call out to the Lord. And because he wants us, there's more that he's saying, I feel yeah. like than ever before. So we need to be hearing the Lord. Yeah, and I think even what you're saying is, you know, as you're going through this and um, is he wants to prepare us for the works that he has for us. You know, in Psalms 139, it talks about how he's fashioned these days for us. That's something I like to go back with our kids. But just think about that, that if we could be in, we could be in any era, any time frame, I would have picked a different one, but that's a different story. He's fashioned our days for us. And if we are truly cl coming in closer, we are. We're ready in the last days when Jesus ascended into heaven, the last, that clock began. But as we, as we are approaching, it says, you know, as the day approaches, you know, don't forget to gather. As the day approaches, he wants to prepare us for the day. You know, when he was spending time with his heavenly father, we don't know what that was like. Um, we don't know how he was praying. We don't know, you know, any, what that looked like. But I can tell you that it prepared him for all of what you're reading. Right. It prepared him to be in a place not to sin. Mm -hmm. It prepared him because Jesus needed to, to end his time with us to be sinless. And people were coming at him and, and he would have been right to, to um, combat them with the truth. He could have been right to take a place of, um, could have been a place of pride and arrogance. It could have turned into that. Mm -hmm. But he chose to respond to them in a way that positioned him not to sin and to stay sinless. That wasn't because he was the perfect, because he was perfect. It was because he had the preparation. So when the accusers came, he knew he was able to have those places in his heart worked out is what I'm thinking when he was in those Mount of, uh, the Mount of Olives. And so as you know, you were just pr you know posing those questions for us. You know, I, I think sometimes it's even just saying, Lord, you love me. And I am yours, positioning our, ourselves for that. But let's let's know he's preparing us for work now, right? For the today, but also we know um, we see in scripture where there was the the little the girl that was possessed, and he had said, "Well, these come out these only come out by prayer and fasting." Well, he wasn't praying; he wasn't fasting and praying in that moment. It was work that had been done ahead of time. Right. And so I just think as we're going through this, look, look, what you were preparing him for something, but I'm sure you weren't telling him. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to prepare us for something that we may not even know yet. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility is just to be with him, right. to spend time with him, to get those places worked out. Yeah. You know, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you. Amen. Call to me. Call to me. So he's saying, pick up the phone, spend that time. He desires to be in our presence. So call to me and I will answer you. And not only will he answer us, it says, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You know, the promise in there is, number one, he's going to give us an answer. And number two, he desires to show more. So even, even more pressing than the answers that we need are the things that have yet to be revealed. Right. And so what a promise of that is that we serve a God that says, call me. You know, we ha I have people on my phone who, who will say, Susie, call me anytime. And I'll tell you why I don't call them. I don't call them because I'm afraid I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to call them because I'm afraid that I'm going to interrupt them. I'm going to call that. I don't call them because of my own insecurities, because of my own issues that I have. But so many times those same people will say, call me anytime. But it's my own pride that ref that refuses to dial that number or to send that text that will say, hey, do you have do you have some time to talk to me? You know, some of the numbers I have on my phone, I'm like, I would never call you. I once had this a conversation with someone of of um, 
who has lots of responsibilities. And I straight out looked at them and said, I will never call you. And they were like, why not? And honestly, it's, I, I didn't realize it in that moment, but it was my own pride and my own arrogance that stood in the way that my own pride and arrogance, my own place to stay protected, to stay, you know, unseen, because it's a lot easier if I just say, oh, well, I have their number on my phone, right? That costs me nothing. But to set up myself and say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them because what? They said to call them. They said any time. And these people, I don't think that they're just saying any time to any time. And so when we hear that our Heavenly Father and he's saying, call me and I will answer you. That we would not let our own pride and arrogance get in the way from approaching him. Because his, his, his faithful response is, Susie, woman of God, man of God, whoever's watching, call me and I will answer you. That's right. And I love you so much. I'm not just going to answer you. I'm going to show you great and mighty things right. that you don't even, which you don't even know. Because mm. he's a father of abundance Right. And later in, in Jeremiah 33 is where we read the promise of what he's saying is I'll blot out those sins. I'll forgive you. I will restore. That's all found in Jeremiah 33 because that's the heavenly father that we serve. That's right. And so w may we be a people that doesn't just hear this where it goes in one ear out the other, but w that we would be a people that call out to him yeah. because he wants to answer. Amen. He wants to speak to you, but we got to call out. We got to call out. So can we respond to the Father? Can we respond to this word today? So, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. And, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, that for your love, for your love, Lord, that you are a God who wants to speak to us, that you're not just some far-off God or you're in some far-off place, but, Lord, that you want to speak to us so that we can be led by you, so that we can be taught by you, so that we can follow you and fulfill the assignment in our lives so that you can lead us in green pastures, Lord, that you can, uh, where, where your yoke is easy and your burden is light, where you bring times in, of refreshing, where there's peace and joy. Lord, everything that we are really after, Lord, it is found in you. And so, Lord, we don't want to look to the other sources anymore. We don't want to hear the other voices. We don't want to be led by our circumstances. And, and right now, Lord, we just repent yeah. of that. Yes. We repent of hearing, of, of giving, of tolerating yeah. the other voices, yeah. of allowing the other voices yeah. to have yeah. uh, a place of yeah. influence in our life. But, Lord, we uh, look to you as our source today. Lord, we turn to you today. And I thank you right now. And I declare, Lord, that spiritual ears are being opened in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we, we break that, that deafness and that blindness, that spiritual deafness that has been so prevalent. We break that in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your healing is coming, that you are restoring spiritual hearing yes. today that your voice will be heard mm -hmm. because you love us yeah. because you are speaking and so lord we want that original measure today mm -hmm. we want that original word lord not just uh hearing what other people are saying not even just hearing good things lord we want to hear you and so, Lord, we commit in our hearts right now, Lord, we commit, Lord, to be a people who come to your word. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that as we come into your word, Lord, that you are giving us eyes to, to see and, and hearts to understand what, what it is that you are saying to us in real time. Yeah. That it's not just a book you, that was written thousands of years ago, but, Lord, that your spirit is speaking to us through your word. Lord, that when we come into times of your presence and we are just sitting with worship music on in the background or, or just in an atmosphere, a peaceful atmosphere, but Lord, we come to you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that your presence would be tangible, yeah. that it would be evident, and Lord, that you would speak, that we would have make place for that still small voice. And then, Lord, in our times of prayer, oh Lord, that we would know, Lord, that you answer our prayers. Yeah. Lord, that when we call out to you, we can be confident, Lord, that you hear us, yeah. but Lord, that we can be confident that you will speak, that you will answer. Mm. You are good. And we yeah. turn to you, our true king, our true source, our father. Lord, all the other voices, Lord, they're nothing. They're nothing compared to you. That's right. And so we, we look to you today amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, let's, let's go ahead. We're going to respond to the Lord. We're going to sing. We're going to sing. Yeah. We're going to give thanks. We're going to give thanks for what he's speaking to us because this yeah. is something that he's speaking to us today. And, and I'm so excited. Every time he speaks to, about, about us hearing, I get excited because I'm like, Cause we're going to hear. Yeah, There's something right. he wants to say. That's right. 
And so I, I just know that God is speaking and he wants to speak into your life right where you're at today. So let's sing together and then and then let's do those discussion questions. Don't just let it pass by. Let's do those discussion questions and let's continue to allow the Lord to speak to us. But know that, you know, we love you. We do. We're grateful for you. We're thankful for each one of you. Um, I just wanted to thank our production team, our worship teams, our youth teams, our creative teams, our communication team. Uh, there's so many people that are a part of what God is doing, and we, we couldn't do it without them. So thank you. Um, and many of you are here right now watching online because of all the, the labor and the hard work that they're doing right now. So yes. thank you to everybody. Uh, but we love you, and we're excited to hear what God is speaking to you. Amen. So God bless.